Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are going to be starting a series that was inspired by a few comments I've received recently regarding people that are want exercises because they're either wheelchair bound, so they want exercises that they can do at a wheelchair level. Maybe they're not standing yet or walking yet. And then also, I have had several comments in the past of people that just don't know where to start. Maybe their stroke was in the last couple of months months and they just don't know what video to start with. So long story short, this is going to be a progression of exercises and activities to take you from maybe bed bound or wheelchair bound all the way up to walking, including towards the end of this series, a progression for stairs. So maybe you're just now preparing to go up and down stairs. So a good progression to get you ready or get your body ready for that activity safely. So whether you just had a stroke or whether your stroke was a couple of years ago, as I always say in my videos, it never hurts to build a strong foundation or to have a strong foundation. It just makes your walking better it makes it safer, it makes you feel more confident, and it's gonna reduce your likelihood of early onset arthritis and other overuse type injuries that can come from an abnormal walking pattern. So all that being said, whether you just had your stroke or whether you've been walking in the community for a while, you will get something out of this series. But in today's video, this is gonna be what I call progression one. We're gonna go through some kind of preparation activities. You might not have picked up on this if you've been watching my videos for a while, but there is kind of a progression within each activity or within each video that I show you. I usually zoom in and then I slowly zoom out, meaning that I'll usually focus on specific components of a bigger movement by doing some mat work, doing some stretching, doing some isolated joint movement, and then I kind of zoom the lens out and usually end with something functional. That's pretty much the same process or methodology I use for every treatment. Now that I've got all of that out of the way, if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and dive into this topic. So there's a couple of key factors. So again, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been walking for a while, there are certain movements that are critical to walking. One of those is having good control of hip rotation, so internal and external rotation. Obviously having good leg control, lifting the leg up and pushing down with the leg and having good core stability because again that is the stable foundation in which the appendages move so having that stable foundation having good knee control so there's times when the muscles are lengthening and shortening and there's times when we want the muscles to just stay in one position and be static and when we want muscles on both sides of the joint to be working together and that's really really important when it comes to the knee so we call it kind of co-contraction. So there's a point in walking where you want like co-contraction. You want muscles contracting on both sides of the joint. That's what gives you knee stability. That's what prevents your knee from buckling. And that's what prevents you from going into hyperextension or recovatum. So that's a critical component of walking. And then of course, ankle. So if you are someone that has a lot of spasticity, of course the prep work is gonna be stretching that ankle out because you do have to have a 90 degree angle in order to be able to stand. And a lot of times with spasticity, you lose that range of motion. So that is absolutely critical, not just when the knee is bent, but also when the knee is straight. So sometimes people can get their ankle to bend like that when the knee is bent but when they go to straighten it, um, some of the calf muscles or the muscles that point the foot are two joint muscles, so they cross the knee joint. That's not really super duper important. What is important is that when the knee is extended, that muscle in the back of the leg, if it's tight, will affect how much you can bend the ankle. So those are the key things that I focus in on when I zoom in. And then of course, getting comfortable standing on the leg. So having a good sit to stand is absolutely critical. Being able to load the leg or put support on the leg is absolutely critical. And so that's gonna be zooming out a little bit. And then of course, taking some of those movements that we zoomed in on 
and actually being able to reproduce those in standing is another super duper critical component of walking and then of course putting it all together. So that's kind of the process I go through. I don't just, when someone walks in for any session, we don't just start walking. We kind of go through the same progression. So I'm gonna take you through that today. And again, even if you've been walking for a while, watch this video, watch these activities, because I promise you they are going to make your walking better. So all that being said, the first set of activities we're gonna do is going to be laying down on the mat. You're gonna start on your back. And remember I talked about that hip rotation. So first thing to do is to be able to not just be able to internally rotate the hip and externally rotate the hip, but you really need to be able to transition and make it a smooth movement. Muscles have different types of actions that they carry out and different muscle fibers do different things. So it's not always that you want a muscle to shorten or you want a muscle to lengthen. Sometimes there's this kind of modulation component of muscles that is also really, really important. So the quality of the movement is super duper important. I like to use a weight around the knee. TheraBand doesn't work as well. I like the weight because it gives more input into the leg. You can feel the leg a little bit more and it gives a little bit of weight bearing into the foot, which everything we want to do is kind of geared towards walking or specific to that activity so getting that extra weight bearing in this position is great and you really need weight to do that um, but also it really challenges the stabilizers in the hip to have that weight on there and be able to keep this movement nice and smooth And then to work on hip extension, basically you're just gonna do bridging. I like to do this in two positions. The first one is just with your feet flat. Sometimes I wrap a strap around the knee, knees, especially if you're in the really early stages, because a lot of times that knee wants to flop out. And again, you're laying down and you're safe, so now's the time to really work on that quality of movement. And then we're gonna go on to single leg bridging where you're gonna actually cross the leg over. This is also really important because you really need to be able to extend that hip or push down with that involved leg without the leg externally rotating or the knee flopping out and that's pretty common. So crossing the leg over, it does two things. Again, it increases the weight bearing on the foot but it also internally rotates the hip as you're extending it. So any of you where your knee flops out to the side when you're walking, this type of bridging right here is super duper critical. And then there is an activity that kind of puts several of the components of walking together as far as the movement that your leg needs to go through. It's basically a rolling activity. So if you are someone who's still bed bound, this will also help you and your caregivers. I've shown this in other videos. Um, it's an excellent activity. It works on your core strengthening and leg movement and kind of bringing it all together. But you're gonna roll and try and create that movement, not by pulling on a bed rail or you know a caregiver pulling on you, but I want you to try and pull your involved leg, kind of bring that knee up to your chest. If you think about it, we're going back to some developmental movements. This is how babies roll. They kind of flex their hip, knees and hips up and kind of rolls them onto their side and hopefully eventually onto their stomach. But it's kind of that same movement, but you just want to use your involved leg. So it's going back to a primitive movement that might tap into something that's kind of hardwired into your brain that might help you to execute this movement. And then also by thinking about that rolling, it's another specific movement. It's or it's kind of a functional activity, so that's why I like this.
So we call this mass flexion and mass extension. But you can see when you flex up, that's definitely a movement that the leg does when walking. And when you roll back and you extend, that's also a movement that the leg does when you're walking. So that's why I really like that activity. And then of course I mentioned that core strengthening or that abdominal strengthening is really, really important. So I always incorporate something, whether it's just doing like a lower trunk rotation where you just rotate your knees side to side. Again, making it smooth, trying to keep your knees together. If you can't keep your knees together, strap them together and then bringing the knees up to the chest. If you have a gym ball, I really, really like these two activities with a gym ball. I will put a link in the description below of a blog I just wrote on a lot of these gym ball activities as kind of walking preparation activities. So I'll, I encourage you to check that out. And then here's what some of those core stabilization activities would look like. And that's just a few of my favorites. There's a lot of variety or different exercises you do, but I'm just kind of highlighting a few of the ones that I think are the easiest for you guys to do on your own. And now we're gonna go into some sitting and some early weight bearing. Again, a lot of you guys have gotten used to not really putting weight on that leg. You may be walking, but if you're using an assistive device, there's probably a lot of you out there that are putting a lot of your weight on that assistive device and not really loading that leg. So again, whether your stroke just happened or whether you've been walking for a couple of years, this activity is for you. So we're gonna do some early weight bearing. The first one, you're gonna have both feet flat on the ground and you're just gonna lean forward. I like these gym ball rollouts, I call them. So using a gym ball. And again, we're just trying to, one, this is the first phase of sit to stand, but two, also encourage weight bearing. And that's what this would look like. then that is it for this video. That is a lot of information and I don't want to put too much information in, the vis in this video. So we're going to call this progression 1A and then next week is going to be progression 1B where we're actually going to, I'm going to go through a progression of working on sit to stand. It's too much for one video. The more you break it down, the easier it's going to be, the more confident you're going to be and the less likely you're going to be to develop some of those compensatory strategies. So that is it for this video, but work on this all week and look forward to that video next week because it's going to be invaluable if you want to normalize your walking pattern. Again, whether you just had your stroke or whether you're a couple of years post, this will help you to normalize that walking pattern. And then I have some exciting news. I started a new website that was really just inspired by all of you and all of your comments. So some of the blogs that I referred to in this video are actually on a new website that I just started. I'm going to be doing a lot of product reviews on that website. I have a few up already. So I highly recommend you check that out and that you subscribe to the newsletter at the very top of that homepage. So I'll put a link for that website below, but subscribe. I'm really excited about the product reviews that I'm going to be doing. I'm already working with a company that's going to be offering a hundred dollar discount on one of their products that I hugely promote. And if you've been following me for a while, you know, I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff. I love reading about it. I love learning about it anything movement related, uh, how the brain is wired and how the brain kind of gets our body to execute certain movements. I love it. So it's also going to include anything I read or 
get really excited about. Um, I'll put it down on paper and kind of explain some of the more technical research articles. I'll break it down and simplify them a little bit. So I'm super excited about that as well. And then I have huge plans for 2021 with some interactive stuff, but I don't want to give too much of that away. So definitely go to the website at the very top, click on the link to get rehab tips. That'll take you to a sign up form. Sign up for that newsletter. That one is going to be specifically to notify you of any new posts that I publish any videos that I publish will be sent through that email. So definitely, definitely, even if you've subscribed to my emails in the past, subscribe to that email because that's how you're gonna get notified whenever I upload or update or share any of this super duper exciting information. And that is it for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you look forward to next week to progression. Remember, progression 1A, where we're gonna work on sit to stands and standing and break that down. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. I want you all to have a fabulous week and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.